What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. We have got, I guess you could call it a sequel, kind of. Um, but if you remember, I released a video on a track called Schmeesville the other day, which has been very, very well received by the community. Like people just seem to really enjoy the track. So the creator, Tej, Tej, Tej DZ, Tej, 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 please tell me how to pronounce your name properly, please, um, has decided to release another one for us. So it's going to be a slightly longer one today. And this is Big Send MX. And I'm hoping that the name lives up to expectations. So having a little bit of a fly around, you can tell it's made by the same guy. You know, it's the same textures, uh, same sort of like inside ruts and the jump seem to be formed the same as well. Uh, apparently you can kind of fit all of the lines on every single bike that he's gone through and tested that. So that's really cool. And you would have seen just as I was flying around at the beginning, I've got no idea where it is now there it is over there i'm going to be trying to ride the kx252 stroke today the 2002 one and the reason for this is there's an uh or tomorrow actually there's a us open supercross race on like old school tracks and it's uh, like this full open oem bikes so hoping they let us ride these old classics two strokes because i would really like to try and put this thing onto the gate against all the big boys on 450s for all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, fxrracing.eu to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. I had a little read through the comments as well on this track on the uh, mod M MXP mods post. And again, I've just seen nothing but positive uh, responses to it. Uh, one guy did say... Is it meant to be a 450 only track? Um, but then the creator replied saying, no, it's like everything is possible even on 125s, but you might just be trying to send unrealistic quads rather than like going triple, triple. So it'd be interesting to see what sort of lines we can come up with. So I'm guessing hitting that takeoff there would make you triple this. Uh, I'm going to check up here. Just I don't think it's a huge jump. That's a nice little triple here to the inside. It's been a while since I've ridden these classic uh, two-stroke bikes, you know. I was kind of contemplating what bike i want to ride for this video do i want to do like uh, electric like the vogue do i want to do two stroke and i thought it'd probably be a good opportunity to get a little bit of practice in on this machine so i haven't got a lot of practice on it and i'm well aware that i'm going to be putting myself at a huge disadvantage for trying to qualify for this race tomorrow i don't mind it too much because i know i'm not going to do uh, be able to do every round anyway uh, round one and two i definitely will be able to to do uh, round three, 100% no, because that's when I'm going to be spending time with the girlfriend over Christmas. And then round four is a possibly. So it's not like I'm going to be in contention for like a championship title or anything like that. So I think to kind of have a little bit of fun for a change and ride something a little bit unorthodox will be really good fun. I do need to message Rubes. Like Rubes is the, the man kind of making the tracks and uh, organising the series overall. When he says open class, I don't know if that just means like mx1 mx2 like normal normal i'm not sure if they're going to include the classic bikes in there so i might have to do a little bit slide into the dms and just quickly ask this bike is incredibly bouncy holy moly and if any of you are interested in taking part in that series then just go over to the my mxb website and you can find it and sign up for it there and i mean if you want to have a little bit of fun make me not be the only person on the cowie then i would certainly appreciate that I'm going to do a little bit of uh, oversharing with you boys today as well. So um, today is day two of me trying to bulk, essentially. What I'm going for is about 3,000 calories a day. And I plan on doing that for throughout winter, really. So the next two, maybe three months, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so the whole point is I'm trying to do it semi or semi clean as well. I don't want to just start having Mackies every single day, for example. I still want to eat like pretty decently. Um, so 3,000 calories has been my target. I barely managed to reach it yesterday and I felt like I didn't stop eating all day. So for these like massive bodybuilders that are sitting on like four, sometimes like 5,000 calories like a day is actually unreal to me. I, I don't get it. Um, but I will say, this might be a little bit too much information, so I do apologize. Um, my toilet today, Probably not my biggest fan. It's been um, it's been a little bit of a war zone. That is not doable on this bike. That is definitely a 450 line. So I will stick to the right hand side from now on. Uh, it's uh, it's not been a pretty sight. I will say, but then again, I feel like any time you drastically change your diet, that's how things are going to go anyway. And when I say I'm doing it semi clean, 
I'm not averse to, you know, slapping like a bunch of cheese in like, scrambled eggs, for example, where usually I'd leave it out, or, uh, I, I, you know, not no, like cookies that are kind of like that size, you know, usually I'd try and stay away from stuff like that when I'm like dieting. Uh, but now it's like, yeah, you know what, one of them, one won't hurt, extra 300 calories towards my total, easy, easy day. Um, so, um, so I suppose through winter, being able to eat whatever food you want is actually quite nice. Now, I'm, I'm not huge into my supplements. When I was uh, working out before, the furthest I go is just like protein powder. So if ever I feel like I'm not getting enough protein in through my food, I'll have one lemon in the day. Um, creatine, which I feel like everyone should have if they just want their muscles to appear bigger. It helps your, your muscles use water a little bit better, uh, more efficiently, helps them recover faster as well. Um, and then I think that was it. Other than that, it was just like, Cod liver oil and uh, like some vitamin gummies, just some random stuff. Uh, but what I'm doing this time is because I feel like I probably don't get enough greens in my system through food. I've got like a, a greens powder that I'll have every morning as well. Um, can you see it? Oh no, it's literally like right there. So it's like ghost stuff. So I've got one is called literally size, which I'll explain about in a second. And then this one is greens, which smells like absolute ass and basically tastes the same as well. So that is a first thing in the morning. Just try and ch pinch your nose and chug it down you as much as you can. Uh, so maybe that's, to be fair, that's probably what's coming out the other end of me. My body's like, what's going on? What's what's all this green stuff going in your body? Let's, let's get rid of it. Uh, but the size one, I was having a little read through it, because usually I don't buy into all these like 100 different supplements that people promote and buy. Uh, but essentially it is the same as the creatine that I've already been having, plus a couple of extra bits. So I thought, you know what? May as well give it a go and, and see how it works. So I mixed that and the greens together in the morning in just like a normal glass size glass of water and just chug that bad boy down me as quickly as I can and it's not pleasant by any means but you kind of got to force yourself to do things sometimes so that is uh, that's kind of where the supplements begin and end for me I'm not doing anything too drastic but what I will say and I have a feeling that it's from the size one so the creatine plus some extra bits is how d there's no way of wording this without it sounding really weird about 20 or 30 minutes after I consume it, I my body like tingles a little bit, but in places that it probably shouldn't. Also known as the taint or the gooch. For whatever reason, I get a bit tingly. Um, so, I mean, it's it's not pleasant. It's not like, oh my god, I can't deal with this. What is going on? So, I mean, I'm still going to carry on doing it and see how it goes. Like, the only thing that I do make, need to make sure that I'm doing the same applies for anyone that even just has normal creatine is just make sure you're drinking enough throughout the day because it does um like your, your body does use up more of the water that you consume so you have to just make sure that you are replacing it uh, but i feel like you guys are all mature enough to know how much uh, water you need to consume and i have got a gym progress this what i'm i'm riding so so poorly it's unreal i'm so sorry we got a gym progress channel in my discord now where people have like been sharing their workouts to each other and like what kind of weights they're doing and their exercises for the day and how their bodies have changed over X amount of time. And it's actually quite wholesome. It's really nice to see. It's one of the favorite things I feel like I've done with this channel so far. So um, hopefully there's some encouragement there to help you guys kind of push yourselves and try and improve a little bit. Because uh, I am by no means a perfect role, role model when it comes to fitness related stuff. I, throughout most of my life, to be fair, I've been really bad for like yo-yo dieting or sticking to like the gym for half a year and then not going for half a year but so i'm really bad at not sticking to things so hopefully we can all do it together and it just kind of pushes and motivates everyone to do to the best they can and be the best they can be uh, it does help the most of the time i go to charlie uh, i haven't been with him yesterday or, and i don't think i'll be going with him today just because of uh, how his work's going on uh, but it's it's nice having someone there to kind of just hop on with between sets and uh, just motivate and push each other a little bit so if you do have a friend or a family member that you can go with then 100 percent try and get them involved even if it's in the new year I, I am dreading going to the gym in the new year a little bit because i know how manic they get i think that's one of them where it might have to be a, a late at night kind of vibe um i did want to say as well that the mx bikes coaching has been going incredibly well at the point of me recording this i've done two sessions and it's literally over the last two days uh, both guys have been like really really sound people to talk to i've really enjoyed the lessons and i'm quite surprised that i'm enjoying teaching people as much as i am um, but if you do want any one-on-one -on -one coaching from myself or whether it's people like reaper doc you get people like cam or aiden and 
I think even like stone riders on there, for example, for helping with like track making too. You can get all kinds of different lessons. Um, then definitely go and have a look at it. There is a link in the description of this video. But if you, you have to scroll down a little bit for it, um, but it just says like one on one coaching and it's mxb-coach.com, I believe. Uh, but it's really, really good fun. So if you want to spend an hour with me, just one on one on the track and just kind of having a good old chinwag, talking about the day, talking about motorbikes, and then just kind of picking up some tips here and there on whatever style of tracks you fancy, then 100% knock yourselves out, go for it. Because I've I have been really enjoying it, which surprises me because I I convinced myself that I'm quite an anxious person, but I, I definitely feel like I'm getting better at it as the years go on and just trying to talk to people that I've never spoken to before. I wouldn't dream of it uh, when I was younger. I mean, when I started my very, very first job, I remember kind of i'd have to answer the phones every now and then and talk to customers and i remember getting off the phone and i would just be sweating i'd feel like super hot and horrible and i was it was grim but i feel like i'm a lot better at stuff like that these days and most of that help comes from kind of youtube and talking to the camera as such it's a little bit different talking to the camera that is just mounted on top of my second monitor as it is to talking to someone that but actually physically in person or even hopping in a discord call and talking to people that you've never spoken to before uh, but it's helping me a lot so not only are we kind of training you guys and helping you guys get better at the game it's also helping me just grow as a person and it makes me get on the game and ride some laps as well and practice too so i mean it's good super cross practice and i'm still still in a little bit of an in-between space at the moment on what bike i want to ride i'm dabbling between like uh, ktm and like the Suzuki, I, I tried the gas gas out a little bit last night and it was okay in some places when not great in others. Tried the Husky last night and exactly the same thing there. Tried the Yamaha too and I thought that was okay. Um, so I'm not sure where I'm going to end up, to be honest, come January time. But I'm just going to keep practicing on the bikes like a little bit here and there a couple times a week. See what I like, see what I don't like and see if I can just fine tune some suspension settings. Because as much as I don't want to hop onto the KTM the same as everyone else's because I like being a little bit different I know I'd be putting myself at a disadvantage because I, I do believe that one is the best right now uh, but we'll see what happens you know like I, I long time viewers of this channel know that I change my mind like five times a week on what bike I'm using uh, so if you are kind of waiting on a supercross setup from me in terms of what bike and suspension etc I probably won't do it until like the week of the actual race the, the, the week of anaheim one because it's gonna it's gonna change lots and lots of times so there's no point in me making the same video three or four times over so i would like to apologize for the uh, the track rate here for me not really giving many solid laps around this place but it's it's so difficult trying to learn a track while talking at the same time and especially when you've got jumps like this that are just blind that you don't know what's on the other side until you get there a lot of it takes like a good 10 maybe 20 laps of practice to kind of know where the tracks go in each time and I'm trying my best to remember but after this left hander for example I don't know what's on the other side of this jump I just have to try and send it and and hope I'm not going to hit that left side because I don't think that's really doable so we're going to go on the right and we're going to send this bad boy this is fine because I can actually see where the landing is go around to the right here check up a little bit more and I think because I keep over uh, overshooting that corner and going off the rut if I went outside they're gone right out right out right out right out lovely if I went outside in that corner, I could definitely send that as a triple. And then I reckon also, if you get a good run round there to the left, you could probably triple round that corner as well. Got a little jump to the inside. We'll take the middle right. Oh, three ruts in one corner. That's a new one. We usually just get, get two around here. And then this, you don't really need to go on the left side here. It's kind of a little transfer over from one side to the other. Preferably hit it a little bit better than I did there. Uh, but it's, it's nice that... He's taken that original concept that everyone really enjoyed and he's expanded upon it and just made it made it bigger for everybody. Uh, so, I mean, I encourage him to keep going and just keep kind of like refining and making better and better tracks as well. It's, uh, I, I remember, yeah, I can't hit that left side because I've not got the oomph to get all the way up and over the triple. Oh, I'm in such a wrong gear. I think that's going to hinder me quite a lot in Supercross, you know. I watched like half a lap of the, uh, the Rubes made a preview video of the Supercross track that we'll be racing on for round one. And I watched like half a lap and I feel like I'm going to struggle in places like the Whoops. Like 450s, you, you can get away with going through the Whoops in basically any gear, you know, even if you end up in fifth. A lot of time they end up lugging their way through and it's fine. But if I'm in too high a gear on this thing, I'm going to lose all of my drive, all of my momentum. And it's going to be a real struggle. And I'm just hoping 
that there's no super difficult like triples in after 180 turns because if there is then that's going to greatly hinder my chances of making it through um, i have to speak with him as well in regards of like I i'm guessing they already have a dedicated commentator for it uh, but my chances i think of qualifying on this machine are very very slim i'm sorry if you heard that my phone just started vibrating yeah my chances of qualifying are quite slim so if I don't make it, it would be nice to be able to just hop in the booth with someone and record it, or I might stream the uh, the commentating perspective as well. So I'll do that after I've finished here. Uh, but overall, like the the track is basically on the same level as the last one he's made. It's just a little bit longer. Uh, I feel like once you have spent a good ten plus laps around here and you know the size of all the jumps, it will be so much better than like me playing it now. Because I again I keep coming up to every single section. I'm like, is this a is this a big triple? Do I need to check up at all here? Do I need to send it? And that, that's the only downside that I have so far. I feel like it looks absolutely fine. Um, it's fairly simple in terms of colours. It's not too dark. I, I like the this kind of orangey sort of texture that he's got going on here. And overall, good solid job. And I hope that he keeps making more and more for us because the, the general community seem to really really enjoy it. I'm just seeing so many positive reviews on his tracks here. Uh, so good job and thank you very much for watching as well i do appreciate it if you could drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new i would very much appreciate that and i hope you have a lovely rest of the day whatever you're up to i will catch you all in the next video peace